So this is your first job? Yeah, this was, uh, I think I was in the 10th, 10th grade, uh, East High, uh -huh. so my sisters had worked here before, so we had like an inn, a family inn, um, so I hit up the guy and was, you know, filled out the application and, and got hired. Uh, I think minimum wage at the time was like 5.45, I think. Uh, yeah, so it was crazy. Uh, uh, and so I was here for maybe like a year and a half, and eight. You know, I was a high school student, so it was. This was around the transition where, you know, jobs that were kind of meant for high schoolers started to, you know, go to older people. Right. Um, yeah. And so my hours was always short, or you know, I rarely, rarely, you know, made over. You know, eighty dollars every two weeks or something crazy like that. So it was, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Then um, I got fired from uh, from here for uh, you know just eating eating food on the on the job type of deal. So yeah, it's crazy. Every kitchen I've always worked in, you eat. You know, yeah, they did know. not want that at all here. Like, <laughs> you, you do that, you, you out. So. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> that was the eat some nuggets thing. And got that was fired. your downfall. So, yep. So I'm, I'm here with Marco Pave. Uh, talk about his new single video that's out. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, the beginning of bigger and better things. Mm -hmm. It's going to keep coming with yep. more, more tunes and more yes. tracks. A lot more. Mm -hmm. it's cool. And uh, this is his first place of employment. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, you were saying this kind of relates to the theme of um, the new track, mm -hmm. and the, I guess ideas in the tracks that are coming later too. Mm -hmm. What what ideas? Are that? Uh, so yeah, the whole series is called payroll music. Um, so you know, trying to survive in this capitalist society is is very difficult. And then you put the lens of, of being African American on that, it's it, it makes it even more difficult. So. You know, I come from a very you know impoverished neighborhood, but I was in a more middle class standing. Like for me to be able to get to this job, I lived in North Memphis, so I was more capable, of, you know, getting around. But I knew it was more to my life than just working working a job. Even in tenth grade, I didn't want to do that. It was just encouraged for from family, uh, mm -hmm. and so the whole series is really just about you know talking about what it's like to try to survive in this society, but then also what it's like to uh, avoid that. I haven't worked a job since 2013, um, and I don't plan on going back to any 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 job in that kind of way. Um, and yeah. so that's just really what it's about, like really being self-motivated and, and pushing yourself to that, to that next level. Yeah, yeah. That's... The, the, the new track is very entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. you might say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I like that. Yeah, this is, yes, it's exactly what it is. And it plays on three meanings of the word mm -hmm. cell. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, the prison cell, mm -hmm. selling, mm -hmm. and then the DNA in mm -hmm. your cells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very provoking yeah I yeah. appreciate that yeah it's a, and that's that's uh sale is like you know one of my favorite records of, of late um and it is about uh it's about the illegal or unfair drug uh policies that we have in places like the south yeah. specifically Memphis Tennessee uh, this past fall I went on a on a uh, west coast tour just to experience what it's like in places from Seattle uh, no, from St. Louis to Kansas City, all the way out to, to Seattle to see what the differences are. Um, St. Louis and Kansas City have both decriminalized, so you, 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 you won't go to jail for, for smoking weed. Uh, and places like Denver and Seattle, you can get rich. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was just, just a start, you know, comparison and difference for a place like Memphis where people are being arrested and, you know, lives are being ruined drug tests are uh, making people lose jobs and just crazy crazy stuff um yeah and so i've had i've had experience in in that illegal black market and it's really me just t t touching on that talking point um and letting people know that you know it, it could have been me too i'm just yeah. you know blessed and lucky to to not have been in that situation it seems kind of different from a lot like a lot of hip-hop uh attitude where often um 
doing time is like a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it does show a sort of credibility mm -hmm. if you're living the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But um, you're taking it to a different place where you're boasting, hey, hey I've never been locked yeah. up. Yeah, it, because it's not. Like, it, it, it's a badge of honor if you... Well, I like to put everything into context. It gets a badge of honor because it's most likely to happen to, yeah. to, 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 to black people, black males doing doing this work or just, just living life in general. Mm -hmm. Um but it's a thing that we we don't want to happen. So I'm not I'm not even really comparing myself to people who have went to jail. It's really just like uh, I was able to outsmart the system in a way, or, yeah. and avoid the system, and not be caught up in that, and still you know be successful and still be a successful artist. It's like, like look at a person like Jay Z. Jay Z didn't you know he's not like oh yeah I, I spent time in jail. Like nah he, he didn't have time. <laughs> If yeah. you go to jail, you you wasting you wasting time, like you you're literally wasting time. So it, it's not even a thing. Yeah, yeah. But it does kind of highlight highlight the dangers of the that kind of entrepreneurial it spirit. It does, and and it's it's very dangerous in a place like Memphis. You got you got you know people. Who know what you do and may be jealous or maybe want to interact with you in a different kind of way, and then you have to watch out for police, and then you have to watch out. You know, once you get that on your record, even if you want to come clean and get a clean life, you can't get a job. Mm -hmm. It would be very, very, very difficult to get a job. And um, for me, it's just this ridiculous to have this still happening in in a place like Memphis, Tennessee, where we know we could uh, easily de decriminalize that and, and change lives. Yeah, yeah. And it's especially absurd when, uh, as you say, you can go out west mm -hmm. and see this whole other attitude yep. and, and it's just the staggered progress a little bit over there, mm -hmm. but nothing over here. So, mm -hmm. so many people's lives are in the balance, yep. as you say. So, um, it also strikes me uh, it, in terms of capitalism and the kinds of work people end up doing based on the divisions that are created between us. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of reminds me of like uh, immigrants or Latinos getting all the jobs that no white people would do, mm -hmm. like harvesting lettuce mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, here's a job that it, it is often pushed on the people of color mm -hmm. dealing. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, so more respectable populations can mm -hmm. be safe mm -hmm. in that, even though you're dealing to them mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. much as any people of color. Exactly. Like, it's, it's you know, there is a stark difference because you, it, it, you have places where, you know, I was in high school up to, you know, I got graduated in 2011, so mm -hmm. um, I knew a lot of, you know, young white kids that sold drugs. But their neighborhoods are not patrolled. Their neighborhoods are not, you know, under surveillance. Right. So they they can sell drugs up until college, in college, and they won't be affected in the same way. But in in, in Memphis, where it's such a police state for you know people of color, you under you under surveillance at all times. Like you yeah. you, you always have to watch out for for just getting caught. Like even if you did something years ago, like it might be a case on you. Like, so you, you you never really know. So it's definitely that that stark difference in the place, like like Memphis. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's tricky uh, in terms of racial politics too, because I mean a good proportion of the police force is African American, mm -hmm. but you know, I guess they don't make the policies mm -mm. they live under. What what do you think about that? Like African American cops enforcing these draconian laws against other African Americans. They have to. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really no, they don't have a choice. Like yeah. they, they didn't, you know, sign up to say, oh, I'm going to, you know, overthrow what the what the police say. Like once you sign up for that, you're in the fraternal brotherhood. Yeah. So you, it, it's the police state. You, you don't have a color in, you know, once you're a police officer. So it's, I know they feel the pain. You would you would see it on a lot of their faces, like that they they know that they're doing something that 
uh, if they weren't a police officer, they would be affected by. It. Um, or even if they, you know, are police officers, some of these folks are their cousins, or their brothers, their sisters, you know, so they are affected in a way, they just can't care in the same way. Yeah. Um, so it's really not up to them or in their racial identity at all. It's, it's just up to how the police state is ran and how yeah. people view black people. Yeah. Uh, so, um, as for the, that, that's kind of what this track is about, but this is part of a whole series. Mm -hmm. You're not calling it an album, right? No, it's not. It's just a music series. So it's mm -hmm. me really just having fun and mm -hmm. uh, getting back to telling more of my stories. Um, Welcome to Graceland was something that was for the people, something yeah. that needed to be responded to in the immediate um, and that's what we did. Um, that's what I was able to do. Mm -hmm. um, but on the whole album, you know, other than 100, that was really not able to tell, you know, who I am as a person and really let people in into my, you know, internal story. Yeah. And so that's what payroll music is really about. Um, and it's just keeping the consistent content coming to, coming to the people on the 1st and 15th of every month. We're dropping a brand new song and a brand new video. Uh, so really just, you know, working our asses off and, and getting yeah. this content out. That's kind of a grueling schedule, actually. Mm -hmm. Two weeks. To, I mean, I'm sure you have a lot of the tracks in the can, but the videos are an ongoing yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And then also, you know, there will be, you know, I'm encouraging people to sign up to my payroll on kingofmarco.com. Um, and that will, you know, give you access to behind the scenes footage. That will give you access to creative, you know, exclusive content um, where I'll be, you know, going to the, 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 the spots of where I shot the video and telling the deeper story of these songs. So it's just going to be a lot of fun and a lot of, you know, giving more insight into how this stuff is made. Oh, cool. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so um, on the one hand, this is still keeping up like you're talking about capitalism and uh, the economy and everything um, this is keeping your political identity in your mm -hmm. music but you say it's more personal at mm -hmm. the same time yeah it's about again it's about me mm -hmm. it's about my life uh, on the perception EP it was a lot you know vulnerable a lot open um, even on that song I mean over on that uh, EP you know I talked about um, some of the situations where, you know, I got fired from McDonald's for eating all the fries, laid off from Kroger for bumping my iPod, like, <laughs> so I'm really, you know, letting people know, like, I'm a regular person and I'm just, you know, believing in myself and dreaming, but yeah. this is what I've been through to, to, to get to these points, so, you know, a lot of people forget, you know, I do uh, TED Talks and do operas and do all these things, but no one really knows the, the backstory and right. that's my my job and my role is to to tell that yeah yeah I, I like how you're weaving in the personal and the political yeah because yeah. for me it's all you know it's all the same I'm, I'm a black man in America like mm -hmm. to not be political is to be ignorant to yeah. be foolish yeah. so yeah that's just really what it's all about yeah yeah it's mostly not people of color who have the luxury of not being political. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, even now, there's less, less, you, you can't, you know. Yeah, yeah. With, with Trump as president, I, there's really not a lot of room for people of, of all colors to, to avoid what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, any ideas? Of the or, uh, thoughts on the tracks that are coming, mm -hmm. like uh, I don't know, just any anything to expect. Um, so yeah, on August fifteenth, we're dropping the song "Never Lost," um, and it's just it's a really it's a funny song, but then it's not at the same time. Uh, it's just about you know pushing through and really not letting society get you down. Um, in the cover. I'll send it to you, but it's like, uh, have you seen the LeVar Ball sketch on SNL? Uh, I guess not. Uh, so I'll send it to you, but <laughs> okay. it's, it's, it's Kenan Thompson playing LeVar Ball, and he, uh, you know, dressed up as him, so he's on the cover of this of the uh, artwork, and then we're going to have, like, a, 
a feature from the Le, Le Ball saying the uh, I'm undefeated, never lost in in the video. And the video is super super fun. I get to play like two two different characters. I'm playing like a like a Mr. Miyaki character. Uh, and I'm playing like the referee in, in a fight, so it's it's uh -huh. a lot of a lot of fun stuff. Um, and talking on a lot of different talking points of just believing in yourself and, and, and never really giving up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that sounds like a blast. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of uh, I don't know, kind of in keeping with what you were doing with the opera in terms of taking on different characters. Mm -hmm. um, even though it doesn't have the same overarching mm -hmm. uh, concept as the opera, would you say? Or, uh, I don't know. Maybe it does. Um, it's in the same vein. Yeah. Um, writing the opera and doing the opera put me just into the mindset of character creation. Yeah. Um, right. And so I think I'm gonna be there for a while, for a long while. So uh -huh. it's really just all about just telling a deeper story. You can have a song. And the song is one thing, but then the video is another thing, um, and then the internal meanings of, of the of the song. So I really like I write a song, and then I listen to it and say, oh, it means this. Like it, it, the, the the songs give me different kind of meanings all the time. So I like want to put some of those meanings within the video to yeah. tell a deeper deeper story. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. By the way, where. Where is the opera now? I know it was only a brief section of it that you mm -hmm. performed uh, in, in the spring. Man, What's it's, happening with that? It's just in the air. Uh, mm -hmm. It's all you know. It's all about budget. All about you know raising the funds to be able to get that done to do it on the on the on the higher level. Mm -hmm. um, we had some interest from from some uh, investors who would have been in, who who were interested. Um, those conversations are just like you know under wraps right now mm -hmm. um so we, we're still going to try to push and try to have something uh on a larger scale by like 2020. uh-huh yeah cool. uh i've noticed on, on twitter and uh, other social media you've been making some comments about um the memphis climate mm -hmm. i guess partly the investment in mm -hmm. the arts and comparing it to say atlanta mm -hmm. Just in a nutshell, what, what's your thinking on that? Man, I've been, you know, I was one of the first, you know, indie underground rap artists to really, like, put Memphis like, on my back and, you know, rip it in a way. Uh, a lot of Memphis alternative rappers, like, prided themselves on being not from Memphis and, you know, sounding different or being different. Mm -hmm. Like, that was never my, my take. Um, so that was like my first step into, you know, being, being, you know, proud of my city. And then my next step was really a lot of work, a lot of activism, a lot of, you know, really, really grueling work uh, from books on Bill to, you know, the TED Talk to working in the schools to try to do everything that I've said that I want to see in the city. So for the past five years, I've been just working to try to build these investments, get, get people, you know, interested in music, um, you know, the fact that I'm, I wrote an opera, it was sold out two shows, and we're still trying to figure out how to get it paid for. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like this, this is where we are. Like Memphis just does not have the support, does not have the resources to help people like myself. You just get to that next level. Like it's, it's a ton of people who, who here who can benefit uh, because they have not done the, the things that I've done. But once you to the point where your neck is against the glass ceiling. Yeah. And nothing else is calm. Like it's it's time for time for a different kind of change. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people I talked to, like for this hip hop uh, story I did recently, compared Memphis to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Said there's just way more investment mm -hmm. in, in hip hop, especially mm -hmm. in Atlanta. And they might not even be hip hop fans, but they know it's going to make money. Yep. So, but I guess it's. You would think that it'd be easy to convince Memphians that that's happening because Memphis is so huge on the charts now. But it is, but it's like a disconnect. It's a total disconnect between what's really happening in the world and what people want to be happening in the world in, the, in Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, like people just don't want to in, invest in that. And 
Memphis made the deliberate choice, like in the seventies, to really not be about money over racism. Atlanta, you know, again, it's in Georgia. It's still a racist place. It still has a police state. It still has all these issues, but they still choose money over racism when it comes down to it. <laughs> Memphis will cut their nose and spite their face, <laughs> lose all the money possible just to just to not support support black people. Yeah. And yeah. that's just this is how it is. Um you would think that hip hop would be elevated and supported and you know, not only because uh they need the support but because hip hop is a million multi million dollar industry. Yeah. Like yeah. you're not helping you helping yourself by helping hip hop. Like, yeah. So it's, it's just really what it boils down to. But people here don't want to do that because they know they have to give up some power or some, you know, uh, cultural standing. Yeah. I see what you're saying, especially in the, the story of Stax and how that went down. Yep. And it was like, almost like a, a financial attack on it. Mm -hmm. And imagine if Stax had, uh, you know, prospered mm -hmm. and all this intervening decades mm -hmm. you know that would be so much money coming into so city. much yep well um, do you think this new series uh, of videos and tracks might change some minds um not not here I don't think but yeah. it, it's for me it's for my catalog and for me to build up what I need to do to you know, present myself better to you know booking agencies and you know larger larger talent um, agencies that can really help you know me take my career to that next level. Uh, yeah. Because you know once I got a taste of touring last year, went on two tours, uh, went on the tour uh, the previous year. Um, like that's where I need to be on the road, really connecting with fans and really you know getting out there and building that story and building building with people. Yeah. Um, so that's really where I'm at with it. Um, if you know, if somebody ha happens to come along and want to invest in Memphis, I'm all for it. But I yeah. just don't, you know, I don't see that being a thing. It's really just pushing outward. Yeah. 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 Um, what was? Uh, were, you, were you on tour with uh, other, uh, you know, rappers or? Mm -hmm. what yeah. Was, what um, was situation there. So my first two tours were with Alfred Banks. Uh, we did the River Kings 1 tour and River Kings 2. Um, River Kings 1 was in the uh, summer of 2016. River Kings 2 was in the spring of 2017. Um, and so yeah, we went out, had a whole lot of fun. That was like, first tour was six dates, second tour was 17 dates. Uh -huh. um, we self-booked all of that. Um, so it, it was really learned a lot about how to tour, uh -huh. how to, you know, really demand your money and get get, the, get your hotels paid for, get your riders and just a whole yeah. lot of like cool stuff. And then the, t the tour that we went on in the fall, uh, the West Coast tour, it was me, 2030, uh, my video guy, Travis, and uh, uh, another hip hop artist named Snapboy Ty. Um, mm -hmm. So we all went out, hopped in the Yukon and, and, and just pushed it. So we went from St. Louis to Kansas City driving uh, Kansas City to Denver, and then we dropped a, a one way to Denver, um, and then we flew from from Denver to Port No Denver to the Bay Area, and then we caught the tr no we flew from the Bay Area to Portland, and then we caught the train from Portland to Seattle, and flew back to Memphis. Oh, nice! <laughs> so it was super fun. Yeah, That's pretty stylish. It was uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was awesome. A lot of different ways to travel, but we missed every single flight. Um, so we God. had to like every day we was like oh we missed this flight we gotta catch another one so it was it was ridiculous that's what happens when you're out on the west coast yeah well, that's when you need a Learjet mm -hmm. <laughs> yes um, man that's great I, I wish you luck on the tours Thank you. That, that really is the best way to build up a career mm -hmm. In fact, I know a lot of Memphis fans that really downplay playing in Memphis. Mm -hmm. They're like, we, you know, of all styles, you know, we just want to get out on the road. Yep. And being from Memphis is really cool. Mm -hmm. It's just 
Memphis goes on is great. Mm -hmm. And it's really just, you know, once you build your name up here, you don't have to, it's really about saturating the market. You don't have to perform every week or yeah. every two weeks or even every month. Um, I know sometimes, you know, you're chasing a dollar or whatever, but if you take time off and then do a big show, it's going to reap more benefits than yeah. constantly trying to perform at the same audiences with the same people. It yeah. just doesn't really do you, doesn't do you justice once you get to a certain point. Yeah, yeah. And that's with any market. Like, if I went to New York, I wouldn't be performing there every weekend. Right, like, yeah. It's just not. It's just not how it goes. You, you, yeah. you have to build up and boom, hit hit each market. Because once you start really getting into it, there there are clauses where you can't perform in this area for forty five days. Right. So what are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> like you have to get out. You gotta go further. So yeah. You know that's just how it goes. So uh, I wanted to ask a bit about. Producer or co-producer mm -hmm. on the new mm -hmm. track, uh, Monte. Carlo. Yeah, Monte Carlo. Yeah, he's. A I don't know his story or. So uh, he's an awesome dude. I really just met him. I met him through Twenty Thirty, the guy that I went on tour with. Mm -hmm. um, and our first time collaborating with uh, with Monte was uh, on. Uh, we did a record called Ups, Ups UPS Tour Life. Um, Universal Plug Society um, was the name of the tour. Um, <laughs> And we did two records with them. It was super fun. You know, they got like, you know, uh, some plays, like three or, three or 4,000 plays on SoundCloud. Um, really just built up the buzz for the tour. Um, and so that's how I got connected with him. And then, you know, I just hit him up like, yo, send me some beats, bro. Like, yeah. And he sent me a bunch of beats. And uh, Sale actually was one of the beats. And it was called Sale. The oh. beat. Because, you know, producers, when they make beats, they, they name the track. Sure. Um, and so... The beat was called Sale, and I just was like, okay, I feel that. And then, boom, never used to sell. I mean, uh -huh. never seen a sale, but yeah. I used to, and it just really came to me. So, really, you know, his name for the beat and the the, the vibe of the beat really inspired that track. Wow. Um, he just hit. started uh, doing lyrics mm -hmm. based on that title. Yeah, based on the title. And it, it just, it all came. It flew, it flowed together. Uh -huh. um, and he is... Uh, uh, He's a member of the Grizz line, um, so he's you know has a instrumentation background. So he plays drums. So you can oh. see him at you know at the at the Grizz's games, at all the games. Uh, sometimes I go courtside, uh, and I you know this I started to see him. I was like, okay, this this Monte. So um, he has a lot of energy, a lot of like good vibes about him, and we we got more records too that will be coming out for this series. So okay. I'm super excited. Cool. Yeah. Any other producers you know you're working with mm -hmm. on the upcoming tracks? Um, so the next song, uh, Never Lost, is produced by Teddy Lowett, um, another up-and-coming producer here in Memphis. Um, does a lot of work with the underground artists here, uh, producing for folks. Uh, he has a crew called Highlander Media Group. Um, they're doing video content, merchandise, and all this different stuff like that. A bunch of cool stuff. Um, Obviously, going to link back up with Kenny Wayne. Uh, do some more tracks with him. Uh, Carlos Brody for sure going to be on the on the project. Uh, they got a couple producers out of uh, one producer in Denver. Uh, they sent me some heat, um, and then a guy out of uh, LA. Um, that that song actually comes out in uh, September first. So I'm okay. doing a song for 901 Day, uh, super Memphis vibe type of song. So. Oh, I'm just cool. man having fun, bro. Just just yeah. really connecting with people and just seeing what happens. Great. A any shows coming up soon? Let's not, see. not soon. Not here. I guess uh, you just did one for it was like a benefit. Yeah, yeah, for the Step Ahead Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I'm really focusing in on content right now. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people ask me like, when are you performing again? I'm like, when you can tell me all the lyrics to these new songs. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's when yeah. I'll be ready. You know, when y'all ready, I'm gonna be ready. So uh, I'm gonna just keep the content coming for now. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm doing a big, big show in November. Uh, I don't want to say exactly what it is, but it's gonna be around the payroll series, around the videos. So it might be in a movie theater, so, so oh, wow, <laughs> something cool. like that. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> What's your favorite venue to perform here in town? Mm. If I really want to be like super grungy and super ratchet, uh, it's the high tone. Yeah. Uh, always. Um, from I like the new Daisy. Um, it just has, you know, got to be packed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, and sometimes the, the sound is not the best. Uh, but yeah, high tone and Minglewood, uh, 1844 is really good. Uh, but high tone is about my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true. There's a lot of performers. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, well, uh, this is awesome. I think that's plenty to mm -hmm. use. You know. Yeah. Um, still recording. I love it when things <laughs> work. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to, you know, talk about? Mm -hmm. I think that's about it. But yeah, just you know, going back to the, um, just the the vibe of Memphis. It's just like you know, a lot of people might get it twisted and say, oh, he don't, you know, he's giving up on Memphis, or he, you know, lost faith in this. Um, it's really just about self-preservation at the end of the day you know mm -hmm. i got family i got two kids married yeah. like at a certain point you just have to focus on your home front yeah. um in specifically home front because i've been focused on the home front on it, it, as far as memphis for again like i said five years yeah. um and really nothing much has come come from it other than my own uh desire to to, to do what needs to be done um, no one has really met me halfway. Like people that I know have millions of dollars. People that we know could write a check to, to change the, the outlook just don't. And so, yeah, uh, that's just really where it is. Um, and I'm just, you know, focusing in on instead of you know being mad about it and you know and things like that. Really, just focusing in on the art. But this, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. That's what got me here. Uh, all the other side antics and other side projects were things that I believed in, but what got me here and what, what led me to be able to even have space to do this was the music. And so that's that's really what it's about at the end of the day, yeah. getting back to that and making sure that is on the forefront. Yeah. Yeah.